Hey my dear data friends, it's Nikola from Data Mozart. Let's continue our DP600 certification learning journey. Today I want to show you how to implement a star schema for your Power BI semantic model. You may be heard that star schema is the preferred way for data modeling in Power BI. And in this video I'm gonna show you how you can in literally few clicks and a few minutes get up and running and build a proper star schema for your semantic model in Power BI. Stay tuned! I'll quickly show you how to create a star schema in Power BI by leveraging a built-in Power Query Editor. I have a flat table from the sample financials dataset provided out of the box in Power BI Desktop. Let's open a Power Query Editor, which is a built-in tool in Power BI Desktop for data transformation. As you may notice, we have columns such as segment, country and product, with lot of redundant data. Values are repeating in the fact table. Also, if I scroll to the right, you see many attributes related to the date. Every proper semantic model should contain a dedicated calendar table, so you definitely don't want to keep these attributes in the fact table. Hence, the idea is to move these values out of the fact table and store them in dimension tables. Let's start with the segment column, which we are going to use to create a segment dimension. I'll duplicate the original query and rename it to segment. Next, I'll right click on the segment column and choose to remove all the other columns. Once the segment is the only remaining column, I'll right click again and remove duplicates. As you see, there are only 5 unique values for segment and that's exactly what we need for our dimension table. Finally, we want to create an ID column so that we can use it as a foreign key in the fact table. I'll go to the add column tab on the top and select index column. In this scenario, I want my ID value to start with 1. Finally, let's give a meaningful name to our newly created column, segment ID. I'll repeat exactly the same process for the country and product columns. Finally, we need to create a date dimension. In this case, we will not be adding the index column, since we are going to create a relationship on the date column itself. Once I have all my dimensions and their attributes stored in separate tables, I'll go to Merge Queries to include ID columns from dimensions as foreign keys in my fact table. Let's first apply this transformation to the segment dimension. I'll merge tables on the common column, which is segment and then scroll all the way to the right. Next, I'll expand the table and choose only the segment ID column. Let's repeat the process for the country and product dimensions. We can now safely remove attribute columns from the fact table, because we should establish proper relationships between the tables and then pull the attribute values from dimension tables. I'll hit close and apply and move to Power BI Desktop to finish my data modeling process. Let's go to the model view and check what we have here. Power BI already recognized common columns and created relationships for us. There is only one disconnected table remaining and that is the date. So I'll manually create a relationship between the date column from the date table and the date column in our financials table. Does this remind you of something? Yes, exactly, we've just created a star schema semantic model which is a recommended way of data modeling when working with Power BI. That's all folks, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new today. If you like this video, please click this like button down below. Also if you want to stay tuned and learn more cool tips and tricks about passing the DP600 exam and learn more about Microsoft Fabric and Power BI, make sure to subscribe to Data Mozart channel. See you soon!